Hi everyone, I'm Juan Bernabe Moreno, the director of uh, IBM Research in Ireland and the UK, and the strategy lead for accelerated discovery for climate and sustainability across IBM Research. We focused uh, on the convergence of AI, quantum computing, and hybrid cloud to advance environmental sciences. I'm here today, very honored to have you here with us, Philip, which is the special envoy for technology for the Republic of Kenya. Today, we will discuss the work that we've been doing together uh, for the Republic of Kenya. Uh, but first, I would like to f welcome you and to set the stage a bit, right? IBM and the Kenyan government, we've been collaborating for almost a year uh, with the idea of supporting the sustainability goals uh, in the country, particularly the president's commitment to double Kenya's uh, forest cover over the next uh, 10 years by growing uh, nothing but uh, 15 billion trees, right? Philip, can you share a little bit about, uh, you know, the problem that uh, we are trying to solve together? Thank you uh, so much, Juan. As you've mentioned, uh, 15 billion trees <laughs> is, not a, is not a light feat. Uh, and as you know, forests really play a, a key socioeconomic role in our country, especially to sustain our ecosystems, but also uh, around our water resources, um, uh, providing 75% of, of what you consume, whether it's through agriculture or just through livelihoods. Um, and we do this a lot through what we call water catchment areas, which are protected um, by law. And so it becomes extremely important uh, for the government to be able to track uh, degradation across, across these protected lands uh, in terms of deforestation, encroachment, logging, etc. Just to give you an example, uh, the city of Nairobi, like any other city, uh, depends on these catchment areas for water. And so at the moment, uh, you know, Nairobi supplies about only 530,000 uh, cubic meters of water, where we're supposed to provide about 850,000. So we are we provide less than half uh, for a population that is 4.3 million. And we know, according to the United Nations, that city populations will only grow. Uh, in our case also, uh, our agriculture is heavily, heavily uh, rain dependent. And we know with climate change, uh, forests actually help retain water uh, uh, and charge the ground. And that's important for our food systems, uh, our our livelihoods for people, but also we are very much uh, a tourist uh, country where we have a lot of wild animals. And, and we know now in, in the last drought, we lost over 2 million uh, livestock but also we also lost quite a considerable amount of, uh, of, of, of wild animals and wildlife. And so to protect uh, these areas, it becomes increasingly important to be a little bit futuristic. And that's why it became important for the president uh, to, to sort of pronounce himself to say, how do we ensure that we are forest? Uh, and that's why we have a 15 billion ambition. But also at the same time, how do we protect what we've already already planted. So the, the first point, as you know, the key challenges we were asked was, how do you ensure that the, the restoration of the water towers is resilient and sustainable? And in a way that uh, only builds, because tree planting is not about planting, it's about growing. How do you track progress to achieve these goals? Because it's over 10 years. And then also, how do we ensure that um, we leverage from this stock of trees uh, around carbon financing? Uh, because then that helps. Uh, communities around forests to actually transition uh, in terms of energy. So to meet these goals, and this is something that I think everybody's talking about, is how do we ensure that we deploy digital tools around monitoring, reporting, and verification? And that is why I think uh, the collaboration with IBM comes in. Oh, thank you. Well, these are certainly ambitious goals set by the president, right, of Kenya. We at IBM, we saw the opportunity of uh, leveraging our Pritvi Earth Observation Foundational Model the one we trained together, we co-developed together with, uh, with NASA to address these challenges, right? This model has been trained on global HLS data, satellite data, which allows to really, uh, you know, have a, a picture of the whole Earth uh, every two to three days, right? And we were able to, to take uh, Prithvi, the Earth observation model, as the starting point to fine-tune that for precise tax that we need to solve in this context for the Kenya government, right, uh, to help the, the water tower uh, campaign. Now that we have discussed uh, the technology itself, can you explain how it helped you address these challenges of, uh, of tracking the government's uh, reforestation efforts? No, I think so. It's about, um, 
billion trees, right? So that's basically at scale. <laughs> so uh, the, the first instance is that uh, the model enables us to think scale, because in most in most uh, afforestation or afforestation efforts, it's really been pilots, right? Pilot and a little chunk of a forest here, a little chunk of a forest there. But with IBM and using your model, uh, it means we can think scale. But also, it means there's a potential for replicability. Uh, as you know, the president is is actually the chair of the of the African uh, presidents on on climate, and and so this could be something that we can share with other countries in terms of how to do this. So, yes, it's fifteen billion, but there could be a hundred billion. You know, not just Kenya, but somewhere else, and you can actually measure uh, an, an increase over time. Secondly, is that you can even track in terms of what we call core benefits. Right, in terms of how is it impacting jobs, how is it impacting livelihoods, are we really transitioning our communities from from the kind of energy to, to clean energy? The second thing, of course, is it, it enables us to sort of, and this is the thing about satellite, right? so you can do pixel by pixel, which means uh, people can actually adopt uh, a pixel uh, over time, so they can actually zoom in by satellite and begin to understand whether the, the, the block that they have adopted is actually reforested. And so we've actually, interesting enough is that from our collaboration, we've actually attracted uh, um, uh, Diageo, right, which is, a, which is a company that that requires water downstream for their input. And they've already, for example, are investing and we are working through the final details of how will they invest on a block of forest that then uh, they have tracked that impacts downstream where their farmers require water for their process. So we know the model works. The adoption of a block is something that is, is bite-sized, right? So it's something that companies can think about or individuals who want to see whether their efforts or conservation efforts are, are, are bearing fruit can actually see because then it's bite-sized and it's not so big. Uh, the other piece, of course, is it means you can actually quantify sequestered carbon. And this is really um, above ground carbon because then you can actually see by satellite and, do, and if you play the model over time, you can actually see the change of, of land cover land use. And so I think it's it's quite interesting is to the extent that, yes, we are solving an older problem around deforestation, but also opening new opportunities, especially around the carbon economy and in a way that you can actually digitally monitor, report and verify from where you are so you really don't need to come to kenya for example if you are if you are somebody who's a carbon buyer especially the big tech companies uh, and we know that the model works right and and because of fine tuning it can it will continue to be agile in a way that then it can respond to any new changes uh, of carbon market regulations it's very inspiring the way that uh, that kenya has a, uh, has approached this uh, reforestation effort with this uh, Adopt a Water Tower campaign. I think that, that sets uh, the bar very high for many other countries trying to, trying to do the same, very inspiring. Let me switch uh, gears a bit now, um, Philip. Back in May and April, we had catastrophic rainfalls in, in Kenya, right? And again, as we are partnering, we are also partnering to, to help support uh, um, the Kenyan government, the Kenyan Red Cross uh, to take the right decisions, right? Can you, uh, how did you feel it from your side, right? Uh, how... So it was interesting. So, and this is something that I, I mentioned to your colleagues here locally, that I just, it was one Sunday afternoon in May, I made a call into the Red Cross and I said, listen, uh, I'm kind of seeing what is happening. I'm seeing where you, you're locating your camps. What is it that we can do from my office to help support your efforts? And all of a sudden there was a call with 20 people. <laughs> and, and the biggest issue was, the, I mean, exactly what the model is trying to help, right? Understanding land cover, land use, understanding how we can recharge uh, and, uh, uh, the groundwater, understanding elevation, uh, understanding flood extent, you know? And so it was quite interesting how we were able to, to then think about mitigating around displacement of about half a million people across the country. And then how are we able to provide these resources to a non-profit organization, which is the Red Cross, that does not necessarily have uh, computational resources or capabilities. And so this is how it was easy just to call upon IBM. And, and people do not understand how fast we did this. So we started to work with IBM in October of last year. And then, you know, by, by March, we're talking about understanding how the model is working. But then end of March, we started having this flood. So again, just repurposing 
uh, the model combining GenAI and open data, we were able to create this end-to-end -end solution that then was able to create real impact on people. The interesting piece is that using your model, we were able to bring other big tech companies, right? So whether it was Meta around mobility, whether it was Esri, whether it was Microsoft around the other AI model. So without this model, we honestly would not have uh, base data. The second piece, of course, was the question which the president was asking, which then combines with, 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 the, with the job of the model was every time there's a flood, it's very difficult to assess damage, right? Whether it's hospitals, roads, infrastructure, energy schools. And this basically has been the case that uh, a lot of African countries and countries in the global south have been making around loss and damage. So using your, your, your preview model, which is interesting, then we can begin to have this good conversation around costing of loss and damage from climate, but also then quickly assess, you know, other risks that people don't see like landslides uh, and the rest. So I think we were able, as you know, to share uh, interactive maps with, with Geospatial Studio, where we're able to assess roads. Very clear, it's quite interesting, uh, including outputs. So I, I sometimes we actually get excited about the maps, but I think for me, the big piece was the capability of IBM to be able to create spreadsheets with the with analysis so that the decision makers who are not tech buffs or tech geeks like us to be able to really understand in a language that they normally operate in every day so that they can deploy resources and capabilities. But also remember now that for the first time, which is interesting, we have a baseline on how to deal with uh, floods, which are becoming recurrent. So our previous flood was in November and then you can imagine November, February, then May, now we expect something else in, in, in about six months. And I think because of this collaboration, we'll be ready. Well, thank you, uh, Philip. So that, uh, I mean, it, it's very close to our heart when we see technology making an impact uh, of, of this dimension. From my point of view, it feels like we are just scratching the surface in terms of uh, what we can do with this technology and with this mindset together, right? Uh, so what's next in our collaboration? Oh my God, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if, if, if you think about, if, if, if you think about uh, the model, right? So the model has multiple capabilities. Uh, one, of course, if, if you look at the, 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 the three big shifts, so we're looking at technology, we're looking at climate as an issue, we're looking at demography. And so for me, the, the, the model has to speak to those three. So how are we continuously scaling up and collaborating in a way that, it's delivering both, I mean, uh, for both the company itself, but also for, for Kenya. So how do we begin to sort of downscale in a way that we can replicate uh, in the country? Because we have, we are testing now, as you know, of course we have the country map, but then there's the biggest problematic, it's pain points, right? So there's the biggest problematic water tower, but then it means how do we open up the model? But also how do we, how do we open up the collaboration so that other people can be able to adopt other water towers? How do we scale it to other countries? As you know, uh, the African Union has something called the Great Green Wall. Uh, actually, our ambition was to use this as a use case to share with them that you can actually take bite-sized <laughs> pieces of the Great Green Wall using this model so that each country leveraging on, on private sector investment uh, can can be able to support afforestation, but also you can be able to to create an investment case uh, for tree growing. The other piece, of course, is beyond, uh, and this is interesting. So beyond afforestation is, and using your model, we've been able to, to to think through other challenges around forests. For example, the big problem around forest it's fancy, but using this geospatial model, it means you have location. You can actually smart fence a forest. So it means you can introduce IOTs uh, like drones, and and you can tra you can train other models in terms of listening to human voices or how people are cutting trees or pe where people are not supposed to be, so that you can smart fence. So think about it. You you even you working together, we've been able to solve another problem, which is how do you really fence a forest? <laughs> the other piece, of course, is because of the core benefits and the transparency. Uh, we've been able to bring other partners, for example, uh, who do clean cooking technologies, to be able then to micro-target communities who we've identified 
cut a specific part of the forest, which are the pixels of the adoption, so that now they're coming into transition, those communities. And in a way, you can see how that then becomes to be what we call a smart forest. The third piece, which again, <laughs> I be, mm, mm, may not even know, is that because of transitioning those communities from trees, uh, we are beginning to see uh, improvements in health outcomes for women and children. So there's a community health professional program, which we will link to this, that will, be, will give us even more granular data in terms of how our children, uh, especially under five, because the mothers have to carry the children on their backs when they're using firewood. So imagine, imagine just the, the ripple effect of that. So when you say what's next, uh, and that's what I said, are you ready? I, I think there's some, there's some interesting things we are seeing that this collaboration can, uh, can bring to bear. That, that's fantastic. I mean, that's an incredible journey. And uh, we are extremely proud to be part of the journey with you. And uh, that's really what uh, counts, right? When you can make technology work for something as big as, uh, you know, preserving our planet and making our lives better for, for everyone. Thanks a lot, uh, Philip. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thanks a lot for the wonderful uh, partnership. And uh, yeah, uh, let, let's go for, you know, for the rest of the journey together. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much, Juan. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs> thanks a lot. Bye-bye. See you.